and beyond. Today we're going to be learning how to throw a ball on the wheel. If you're still unsure uh, on how to center, you can check out our other video on centering, which I'll list in the description box below. I've got about one and a half, a little over one and a half pounds of clay here to make a small ball. Now you can use any amount of clay, but to start out with, I'd say um, a little over a pound, like a pound and a fourth, is a good amount to start with. The first thing you're going to do for a ball after you make your patty is slightly indent the bottom of the patty here. So as you can see, I'm using my dominant hand, the fingertips, and just slightly pressing in. Don't press too much in and don't press too hard or you might rip your patty off the wheel or you won't have enough support on the bottom. You're just doing that so you can add a little bit more clay up here to save for the walls of the bowl rather than just trimming it out of the foot later. The next step is going into your bowl. So I'm going to open it up into the very center and it's just a slight pressure. Now with bowls, you're going to leave enough clay in the bottom so that you can trim a foot out. So don't go down too far or you won't have enough clay at the bottom later to trim out. And now I'm using the middle finger of my dominant hand and both of my hands are together. They're not, there's not any waving around, wavering. I'm just locking my hands together and compressing this clay slightly. It's just a gentle push. And I'm also beginning to shape the inside of the bowl. So when I first sit down to throw, I already know generally what shape I'm going to be throwing. And this helps you because you know what you're doing in the process. You're not making that decision as you go. But while you're throwing bowls, you are focused more on the inside shape of the bowl rather than the outside because you pay more attention to the outside once you're trimming. So now I have a pretty good interior shape and it's compressed enough to my liking. And I'm going to just push in on both sides equally slightly just because I am doing a taller walled bowl and it helps create the shape on the inside before I start the first pull. And this first pull is just going to be finishing off the inside shape of that so that now the shape is about this big and the patty is this big. So it's inside, it's only that big. I want it to be all the way to the outside so that shape meets both of these sides. So I'm going to start the first pull. You put water on the outside and on the inside every single time before you pull. This lets your fingers glide across the clay without getting stuck and to create an even pull. I use the tips of my fingers right here. It's a little, the side slant of my middle fingers. Sometimes my other fingers come in to help, but I don't really pay much attention to those. But these do most of the work. So I'm gonna wet the inside and the outside. And compress this one more time. And now we're ready to pull. So my left hand, which is inside of the bowl, is below my outside hand. And when I get close to the top, I start to relieve the amount of pressure that I'm pushing with because it's going to naturally thin towards the top and so if you're using equal pressure, you're going to be thinner always at the top and thicker at the bottom and you want to have even walls, not thick and then thin. You'll trim some of the thickness away down here, but you still want to create the evenness throughout. I wetted the inside and outside, and I'm wetting my hands, and now I'm going in for my second pull. And there is an air bubble in here, but it's working itself out pretty nicely, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And now I'm relieving that pressure slightly. And each time, I pay attention to the lip. And as you can see, the outside of the bowl looks kind of strange at this point. There's this like wall, and then, then it goes up and looks like it could be a bowl. 
And the reason for that is that you are paying attention to the inside of the bowl more than the outside of the bowl while you're throwing. Because you're going to trim away a lot of this clay here at the bottom. But I do have a lot of clay here at the bottom. And since this is about a pound and a half and just from prior experience, I know that I can go larger with this amount. And I still, I see that visually. I see this clay here at the bottom. I'm going to wet the inside and outside and my hands and do another pull. And the air bubble just worked itself out there. It's awesome. And I'm pulling slightly out and this is just to shape the form, um, which is um, my preference. It doesn't have anything to do with what you have to be doing. And I'm going to shape this one more time. So I'm going to remove water from the inside slightly with a sponge and on the outside. But to clean it up, I'm going to be using my red mud tools rib on the inside and my metal rib on the outside. And I like to clean the inside first. So I'm going to clean the inside and I just slightly wetted it before. And then I'm going to bend it and go in here and just smooth those walls out. Get it nice and clean. Get all the slip off of it. And if you still have water, you can get some of it out with the sponge again. And then go back with your tool is what I do. So it has slip on here and it should glide along fine. You just don't want it to get stuck on the inside. That's really sad when that happens. And I try to keep my wheel pretty slow at this point because you're almost done with it and you don't want to jerk it too hard and you don't want the rib to go flying in. So then I'm going to pay attention to the slip again. And I get my fingers wet before that I do that. That way it glides along pretty easily. And I'm compressing and smoothing the lip at the same time. And remember to let everything go around one full rotation. I'm going to use this metal rib on the outside. And start towards the foot where all that clay is left. And slightly forming it as I go. But you do most of the forming when you're throwing. forming a little bit because it's gotten pretty wobbly from that air bubble but that's okay and touching up this lip that's always the last thing that I do is touch up the lip and then sometimes I even go in on the outside with the rib just to clean up the extra slip that I produced from cleaning the lip and softening the lip and then I roll it over with my thumb one more time and the last thing that you're going to do before you cut it off the wheel is take a wooden tool like this and I'm just going to cut some clay off at the bottom. This is called wet trimming. So I just removed all this clay, which means I won't have to remove that later while I'm while it's flipped over and I'm trimming it. And the last thing you're gonna do is take your wire tool and cut it off the wheel. I usually trim the wheel off and then I'll go get a bat and I'll be back to cut it off the wheel. Now we're done throwing our bowl, and we have our wear board and our wire tool. And I sit down when I cut off uh, anything from the wheel. And if you haven't used the wire tool before or you're having trouble using it, my solution is always to grab it from the inside, pull out to the middle, and then wrap it around once. Um, I use my dominant hand. I guess that's what's natural for everybody. And then you use your thumbs here to keep it taut. So you're going to pull underneath the ball. And I usually curve it around. I'm going to do that again. Since this clay is wet, I like to do that more than once. And see, it's already um, unattached. But I still like to do that anyways, just to be sure that I'm not going to be tugging it off when I'm pulling it. You want to touch it as little as possible when you pull it off because it's still so wet. You can warp it and get fingerprints on it. So I turn my wheel off after I do that, just in case the wheel goes flying and then my pot goes flying. It's just precautionary. <laughs> so I'm getting my wear board 
And then you're going to use the opposites of your hand to pick up the ball or whatever you're getting off the wheel. So I'm using my left hand um, closest to me and my right hand away from me and you just pick it up on the bottom and try not to touch the top part with your thumbs. Just slightly lift and place on your board. And that's it. If you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to comment in the section below. And thanks for watching To The Wheel and Beyond.